Hello, it's Aga from Arby's Artist. Today, the last part of the post-production process of this image. Have you watched the first two parts of this series? If no, be sure to check it out. I put the links in the corner for your reference. Anyway, are you ready to see what else we can do with this image? I hope so. Let me show you. Okay, now we will add some final touches. Let's create a new layer and choose a yellow color that matches the sunlight. I'll be adding some sort of bloom effect to highlight some parts. I will paint it in just in some places, not everywhere. Maybe here as well, but I need to make the brush smaller. Perhaps here as well, but I increase the size of the brush a little. Let's make it on the screen mode and change opacity. show you before and after. It's a small detail, but it really makes a difference. Let's name the layer Bloom. And now I'd like to add some life to this image. I think that with some birds this image will be more interesting and give even more inviting look. So find some PNG birds online and paste it to the file. Let me position it. Maybe somewhere here, but I'll do them larger. Convert to a smart object. Now I select the color from the image and I create a new layer. Alt plus Backscapes. Now click with Alt in between the layers so now it only works on the layer below. Awesome, so by controlling opacity, we can create an effect that the birds are somewhere in the fog. Okay, I desaturate them as well as I don't want them to stand out, only to add some life to the image. Let me adjust it now as it looks a bit different if we have the whole image. Ok, I want to make it realistic, so we need to blur them. Go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. We can adjust the angle and the distance. I decrease the opacity of the bluish layer. Awesome, what do you think? Anyway, I want to add something else, the butterfly. It will help with composition and additionally add this inviting fairy tale look to the garden. Who doesn't like butterflies, right? I make it smaller and position it somewhere here. Let's adjust the color. I make it more cyan to match the water and the image overall. I need to match the lighting as well, so I add the contrast by adding curves. But we also need to paint it out a little from the bottom to make sort of the shadow. I add the motion blur effect again to imitate that the butterfly is just to sit on the fern. Let me adjust these options. Great, I really like it. 
I select all and group together. I name it assets. We can also try to add some lens effect to this. Actually, we can add these layers to one group to keep it simple. I name it overlays. Let me position it and scale to match the image first. Next, change the mode to screen. So you can see the difference. It's not a big change. At first glance, you may even not notice it, but it adds lots of photorealism to the image. At the end, I would like to add a waterfall that falls from the rock on the left-hand side. I found some image that have a sort of similar perspective. Let's flip it. I make it transparent to be able to position it in the correct place. It should be a bit smaller as well. Something like this. Ok, now we can go back to the solid image. Click the mask and let's try to paint only what we need. If you click a mask with Alt, it will create a black mask. I'll move the view closer. Brush should be soft and quite small. It's quite a long process. You may find some PNG images of the waterfall and it will be much easier, but I wanted to show you how to work with the photo as perhaps it will be your only option. We can leave this part of the photo. I like it here. Now let's adjust the color so the waterfall actually matches the render. Curves are better for this as you can control brights as well as colors. Change the mode to blue and play around with the curves. Here you make it more blue or more yellow. Red controls the red and cyan relation. We need to try adjusting different colors to make it work. Green mode controls green and magenta relation. Ok, now let's select the rails so we can subtract the waterfall from the parts where it should be behind the rails. Let's add the ferns with shift as well. Ok, we can group it and add the mask on the top of the group. but we need to invert the mask. We should also paint out this part to make a bit of shadow here. We can use this selection and add another curve and make it more contrasty. We can additionally desaturate it a bit to make it more in line with the render.
Let's see how it looks with and without adjustments. Actually, I think we should add more dark parts. I will darken it. Let's fill the mask with black and brush the areas we want to be darker. Awesome! Looks good! Let me show you the whole progress from start to finish. Awesome work! I think you learned a lot on the way, didn't you? What do you think about the series like this? Do you like the idea? Let me know in the comments your thoughts. Also, if you want to understand my way of thinking about visualizations, I'd like to invite you to check out the book The Art of Arby's Images, where you will find a massive dose of information about artistic approach in Arby's. Click here to check it out on our website. Bye-bye!